In this coding exercise, I'm going to use a little bit different format than usual. Usually, I like to give out a RSpec test and then have you build a program until the tests pass. But in this one, I want to take a little bit different approach and have you work with the terminal and with the prompt. And so for that, we're going to build something completely from scratch. And because we're not going to have the test to look at in order to see what needs to be built, we'll look at the instructions first. So the instructions say that this game is called high-low and we need to build a program that generates a prompt for users. So it's a, essentially a game that will go on and on until a user has guessed the right number. Our program needs to generate a random number. So the answer, or the correct answer is gonna be different for every game. And then from that point, the user needs to guess a number between zero and 24. So we know we're going to have to implement a random number generator. From there, we're going to enter a loop that is going to test to see if a user has guessed properly or improperly. And as you can see from the instructions, if a user guesses a number lower than the answer, the output should say higher and guess again. If the user guesses a number higher than the answer, then the output should be lower. So essentially what we're trying to do is to give the user hints until they guess the correct answer. When they do get the correct answer, then they should be able to be told and say something like, yeah, you got it right, and then the game's going to end. This is going to test your knowledge of getting standard input from the user, looping, conditionals, and random numbers. And now with that exercise description out of the way, we can switch over into the terminal and let's start building our game. So the very first thing we know is that we are going to need a random number. One of the requirements of the exercise is that we have a random number. So every time someone plays the game, it's going to have a different number. I think that that part makes sense. So I'm going to create a variable called, let's not name, we'll call this num, and I'm going to set it equal to random 25, because if you also remember back to the description, you can see that it says the first prompt should say, guess a number between 0 and 24. So if I say ran 25, that is going to get that. And if you don't believe me, that's perfectly fine. Let's test it out. If I do ran 25 and run this, the first time I run it, it's going to be 23. Next time, 16. Two, and we can keep on doing this forever and it's going to keep on giving us random numbers. So this is everything that we should need for getting a random number. So that is the first part. Next is we need a prompt. So I'm going to say puts and now inside of this let's just copy and paste exactly what's in the exercise description. So where it says guess a number between 0 and 24 and you can just come and paste that inside. Now what we need is with this type of game, we need some type of looping mechanism because if the user guesses, guesses wrong, which there is a 1 in 25 chance that they're going to guess wrong, then we need to prompt them and ask them the question again. And if you follow the flow, when the user guesses, if the number is lower than the answer, the output should be higher. In other words, you could say you really need to guess higher, try again. Now if the user guesses a number that is higher than the answer, then the output should be you really need to guess lower and guess again or say yay you got it right. So we know we need a loop and we could use a few different looping mechanisms. We could say well, we could say loop and loop is what I want to go with because loop kind of is the de facto type of looping mechanism in Ruby. Now, if you have a collection that you're looping through and you know the elements, or I should say if it's an array or hash or something, then you're going to typically use each. But in this case, we don't know how many times. The user may guess one time and get it right. They may guess 500 times and keep getting it wrong. There is no way of knowing how that part of it's going to work. So we're going to just use a generic loop and that's going to be everything that we need.
Now let's create a variable called user answer. Set this equal to gets.chomp.2i. And both of these methods, chomp and 2i, are very important in this case. And I'll explain why. First, chomp gives us a nice way of being able to cut off any end of line characters. And I've covered this before, but if you were to just put gets by itself, then say a user typed in ASDF. As far as you see, you are going to see ASDF from what the user is typing in. But what the actual compiler or the interpreter for Ruby sees is first they say that this is a string data type and then they see an end of line character. And the reason why this end of line character is here is because in order to type this in, the user needs to hit return. Ruby catches that return and says, oh, I guess you wanted this end of line character here, and this is what the output would actually look like. And that's fine for some cases, but in ours, this would not match our number. And so we need to clean it up chomp gets rid of that and so we can even test this out right here if i say chomp and if i run this you can see that now it just says asdf now we have one other issue and that is say a user guesses 10. the way that ruby takes it in ruby doesn't know is 10 meant to be a string is it meant to be an integer what it, what exact data type is it supposed to be because we're going to need to have some type of comparison and say that they type in 10, it's viewed, viewed as a string, but if we say 10 and check to see is what the user typed in, this 10, is it equal to 10, we're gonna get an error message because you can't compare a string data type with an integer. So that is what our little 2i method does at the very end is it's actually going to convert it. So if I say 2i, hit save, and then run this, now you can see that it is, oh, and I type 2s in. I've gotten the habit of doing that too much. Okay, so now if we switch this out and type 2i and run this, it's going to return 10 and you can see it does it without the string. So this is the first step, which is cleaning up the data that we get from the user. Even if you built the rest of the program perfectly, if you don't clean up the data, then it would not work. So this is an important step. So now that we have that, I'm going to also come here, clean up this because we don't need it anymore. And now let's talk about what we have to do now. Now that we have our good, clean user answer, now it's time to have it run and check to see if the number is higher or if it's lower, so or if it's equal. So if the then that's the first one. So if I'm gonna say if the user answer is equal to num, which remember num is our random variable. It's gonna be different every time. So we can't hard code a number in here, we just call num, and that's going to have whatever the value is. So we're gonna say, if the user answer is equal to num, then I wanna say puts, and say yay, you got it right. And then a very important step, and we're going to break. What break is, when you're working with the loop construct, is a break will end the loop. We, when we have a user that guesses right, we want the game to stop. So break will make that possible. Now we need to put in our other conditionals and the syntax for that is else if. So we're gonna say else if user answer, and we'll say if the answer is greater than the number, then we're going to print out puts lower. And just for the sake of clarification, because after I wrote the description, I realized that just saying higher or lower may be a little bit confusing. So say, so let's say guess lower, please guess again. And the reason why I'm doing that is just because to make it clear that this is a hint that they guessed too high, you could even do something like this. You guessed too high, try, and then we could say, 
guessing lower. Just in case you were confused by the exercise description, then, uh, then that's the reason why. So this will make it much more clear. You guess too high, try guessing lower, please guess again, and that's all we need to do. I'm gonna copy this and come down, paste it in, and I'm just gonna switch this out. So now I'm gonna say if the user answer is less than the number, I'm going to say puts you guessed too low, try guessing higher. Please guess again, press end, and that's all we need to do. Uh, and the other last thing we have to do is just call the method, because remember, if we don't call the method, then it's not going to actually work. It's just a defined method. Now, this one, we're not gonna say rspec, because I don't have any rspec tests here. I'm just gonna say Ruby, January 18th, and let's see if this works. So it says, guess a number between zero and 24. If I type in three, it says, you guess too high. Oh, and I realize that I'm gonna break out of this because I really am not a big fan of grammar mistakes. So let's come back here and I have a little spelling mistake. So this is supposed to be two. This was not related to code whatsoever, just the fact that I didn't want you to see me making a horrible spelling mistake. Okay, so guess a number between zero and 24. Say 10, you guess too low, try guessing higher, please guess again. Now I'll say, so if I guess too low, then I could say, well, what about 15? You guess too low still. Okay, well, what about 20? You guess too low, still too high. Well, let's say 24. You guess too high, try guessing lower. 23, you guess too high. Wow, I'm horrible at this game. 22, you guess too high. 21. Yay, you got it right. So our game is working perfectly. This is a very common interview question, and the main reason why is because you need to have knowledge of a, for, a, a few very core Ruby concepts. First, you need to be able to generate a random number. You also need to be able to find a method. That's kind of a given. Then presenting information to users followed by how to perform looping and specifically looping where we don't we can't use enumerable methods such as each that do a lot of the hard work for us so by being able to implement a generic loop they can see that you understand how data flow works and then also here you can see how to get information from users on a console scripting kind of basis and then run through conditionals multiple conditionals just like this so great job if you went through that. You now know how to build the high-low game.